One of the things I love about sculpture is the way you understand a sculpture is by relating it to your own body. So you feel its edges and its presence in space by that relationship. When I think about a young black child relating to that sculpture is very exciting for me. What I learned from working on the Brick House sculpture is that I really enjoy working at a much larger scale. Having to use my entire body and mind to make the work was really exhilarating. Relative to the figure, my hand is like a fine tool at that scale. I was able to push through some new ideas and new forms for this show, including this corrugated Quonset hut and a really old form in my work, the jug, has reappeared in this new form. I was working with a skirt form and I added a handle and it just transformed the piece. I start to think about my relationship to European sculpture and older sculptures. The jug body has a torso that is really reminiscent of early 20th century West African sculpture. There's the African-American form of the jug and then there's a rather contemporary representation of the woman herself and her face and the way her hair is drawn. It was very happy to have that kind of creolization of form. The title Loophole of Retreat refers to a book written by Harriet Jacobs called Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. She described being trapped in a crawl space, a garret of a house. She could see out, so she had that power of knowledge, but she was still incarcerated. I used to think of my work as autoethnographic, but there's moments where you have to explore fiction and narrative in order to connect the dots when there's been so much left out of the archive. I felt, again, that this was a point of view, the self-determinant actions of Black women across decades and across the diaspora.